hello everyone and welcome back to the channel i hope you all are doing absolutely well guys this video is going to be super helpful for you if you are also preparing for your placement interviews okay because we know oops is the majority part in your interviews so we have a lot of doubts okay what is encapsulation abstraction even though we have studied all these topics in detail but we seek some sort of quick revision of all these topics so this video is going to be basically help you to uh, quickly revise these concepts and you will get some material what to speak in your interviews when it comes to this topic usually when you will be asked questions on oops uh, you will not be asked to write a code on them but just for additional sake i have taken simple code snippets also so that you understand the concepts also in a better way and just in case if you are asked by the interviewer to give some sample code uh, uh, demonstration you can write that code and showcase them before we dive deep into the details if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure to subscribe to the channel because i regularly post these kinds of helpful videos and it is going to be super helpful going forward if you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the important notifications let's now start with our first thing which is what actually is oops okay the full form of oops is object oriented programming okay now oops is a way of writing programs that use objects to organize and structure code it is designed to represent real life entities like car employees or bank accounts making code more reusable and easier to manage oops ensures that the data and the functions that operate on it stays together preventing unauthorized access from other parts of the program so see uh, hope you have understood what oops is now based on oops like we call it as different pillars of oops okay or different features okay or different concepts of oops all are same things oops is mainly based on object oriented programming which is class and their objects okay so we will understand uh, basically to understand oops better we will break down oops into its core concepts like classes objects okay and then we have different pillars of oops as we call it as like inheritance encapsulation polymorphism and abstraction we will see one by one all of them in detail basically all these are one individual question in your interviews like what is a class and object what is inheritance what is encapsulation so in this way these are like one single question in your interview this can be your question okay let's now move on to the first one which is classes and object okay a class is a blueprint for creating objects it defines the properties and behaviors that objects will have think of a car all share the common properties like wheels speed and mileage in oops a class called car can define these properties okay properties which properties properties like wheels speed and mileage an object is what an object is a real world instance of a class okay if car is the class then bmw or tesla are the objects of that class you can say so see we we have a car class which has its instances okay so you can say parent class and then these are the children's of it right to understand it better these are the categories sub categories or instances so this will make you understand it better now objects holds actual data and can perform actions defined in that class so one such example is here we have defined a class car and we have defined some uh, like variables and functions in it that are public we will also see in the upcoming section what is public private okay so let's see speed is our variable and then accelerate is the function what accelerate function is doing it is increasing the speed by 10 okay and then what we are doing in the main function in the main function we have created an object of the class car how do we create an object of the class car you have to focus on this line that is car we will mention the class name and then object name okay my car then my car dot speed we are assigning the value of to speed as 50 and then my car dot accelerate okay this is like we have created the instance of a class okay hope you have understood it so our my car was the object okay and uh, this was the concept of car classes and objects let's now move on to the next one which is our encapsulation so now we are studying different pillars of uh, oops okay in that we have different different concepts like encapsulation inheritance we will see all of them one by one now you might see i have not taken too much of content because you don't have to speak too much on these topics okay like uh, if a question is asked to you what is encapsulation in oops so speaking of this much content is more than sufficient okay so that is why i have taken the content in such a way that whatever is important that only you have to speak and then if required you can elaborate the examples further okay if the interviewer wants you to speak more let's see encapsulation is about hiding the details of how something works and only exposing what is necessary okay encapsule means what capturing something inside a capsule right and when we break the capsule then only we can see those th details but when the capsule is closed the things will not be visible to us so that is what we are saying here 
Encapsulation is about hiding the details of how something works and only exposing what is necessary. Think of a company which has different departments like finance, sales and HR which manage their own data and no one outside the department can directly modify it. So in OOPS, we use private variables and provide access only through functions. Okay. So basically in order to uh, hide some data or keep it private, what we use, we use private. Okay private variables and then public variables as I told you right so private variables are hidden from outside so let's see what this example we have a class employee and here we have a private variable that we have declared which is salary so this is hidden from outside now these are public ones so these are easily accessible in public we have uh, set salary okay function which is setting the salary basically and then we have get salary so these are like public functions and these are private variables so hope you have understood the main concept of encapsulation is that only that hiding the details uh, which are hiding the details which are not necessary and only showing the details which are necessary. Okay. Let's now move on to the next one which is abstraction. Okay. Again how much you want to speak I have already taken it here. You can take it take this much and note it down also if required. Let's see what is abstraction now. Abstraction focuses on showing only the essential details and hiding the unnecessary complexity. When you drive a car, you just press the accelerator to speed up. You don't need to know how the engine works internally, right? So in C++, abstraction is achieved using abstract classes or interfaces. So see, the answer lies, uh, the answer about abstraction, basically what interviewer wants to hear from you lies in this part only, okay, in the first part only. Uh, if you speak this much also about abstraction, then interview gets to know that yes you know what is abstraction okay what is abstraction abstraction focuses only on showcasing the essential details and hiding the unnecessary complexity okay that is what is abstraction actually then you can support your answer with an example for example which i gave like uh, the real life example of exception is driving the car so when we drive a car we don't know the internals of it see we know how to speed up a car right but we don't know internally what uh, things are there mechanically and all right what are things are there inside the car. We don't need to know. We just need to know how the things are there and how it works simply. So uh, in abstract uh, in C++ abstraction is achieved using abstract classes or interfaces. Here is one example that you have. So we have a class shape and then we have a public uh, function which is draw. Okay. And then pure, this is pure virtual function. And then we are creating a class circle which is having a public shape. And then we are mentioning overriding that class. Okay. So basically this is one of the examples of abstraction as I told you you might not even need or uh, no one will ask you to like write the code of abstraction in your interviews that is very rare but just in case if they ask this is one example which you can give. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, next pillar or next concepts of oops is polymorphism okay. Let's understand first of all this much content is more than enough for you to speak in your this question if you get this question let's understand what it is. So polymorphism means what many forms okay. So see I want to tell you polymorphism is made up of two words okay poly plus morphism okay and then you have to understand and you have to actually explain this while you are answering this to your interviewer okay because that will give an, a good impression. Poly means what many okay and Morphism means what forms. Okay. So the word polymorphism is made from two different words like poly plus morphism where poly stands for many and morphism stands for forms. Now polymorphism means many forms. It allows the same function to behave differently based on the object calling it. A now we are giving an example. Okay. A person can be a parent at home, an employee at work and a customer at a shop. All are different roles of the same person in C++. Polymorphism is achieved using function overloading and method overriding. Example is uh, function overloading, same function, different parameters. Okay. So see here we have an example. There is this one person who is acting different roles in his life. Okay. At one time he is a student on the same time. Uh, he is like he is an employee in his office, right? He is a father in his family and then at a gro grocery store, he is a customer and in an interview, he is an interviewee. So the person is same. He has many forms in different locations okay in different uh, scenarios basically so here is an example of uh, polymorphism so he, we have a math class okay and then what we are doing we are having a uh, add function which is taking a and b as the inputs and returning a plus b similarly we have one more add function okay this is this is also add function but here the type of uh, variables is different and type of the function is also different so although the function is same but it is having different forms okay that is why this is an example of polymorphism hope you have understood it 
let's now move on to the next one which is uh, okay now there is one more example of method overriding because you know as i told you when you are explaining polymorphism you might also get asked uh, please give us an example of method overriding okay so what is method overriding in method overriding child class modifies the parent class method okay so see we have an example we have a parent class animal and then a child class dog okay so child class dog is a uh, child of parent class animal and uh, here what is what is happening basically in uh, any uh, parent class okay animal which is animal what is happening we have a function sound okay which is saying animal sound now in child class the uh, sound function is overriding the parent class method okay so we also have a child class uh, the same function is there okay sound in the child class also and the function of the child class is overriding the function of the parent class okay you can see the same function name is there so this is called as method or function overriding okay not just method okay you can also call it as uh, function overriding also both means the same okay hope you have understood this example let's now move on to the next one the next concept that we have is inheritance okay inheritance is what so inheritance allows a class to reuse the properties and behaviors of another class if you have a vehicle class with basic properties a car class can inherit from its instead of re redefining everything okay so for example we have taken a class here which is animal class okay which is a parent class then the child classes dog cat and cow will inherit from the will inherit the properties of animal class basically okay so this is basically simple parent and child whatever the properties that a parent will have child will also have those properties and can inherit those properties right so here we have taken the example of a vehicle class so see vehicle class is the parent class which is having a variable int uh, wheels okay this is the variable wheels now we have a car class okay so car class is inheriting from vehicle class right inheriting vehicle we have written it here now you can see what is uh, what is happening is here the brand variable is there simple okay but writing this line means what that the child class or the car class is inheriting the properties of its parent class vehicle okay moving on so uh, we have seen the different pillars now there is something called as dynamic binding in uh, oops okay so you should also know this concept also but usually this concept is not that much asked but just for completeness sake i have taken this one also what is dynamic binding dynamic binding ensures that the correct function is called for an object at run time rather than compile time it is useful when using virtual function in inheritance okay so this is one of the concept basically so and here i have give, taken one example to showcase what is dynamic binding make sure to note it down have some basic idea about it as i said this will not be asked too much but it is good to know okay let's move on to the next one so we have seen a lot of uh, things about oops okay it's different pillars okay it's features you can call it as so let's note let's see what we have seen so far we have seen what are classes and objects right we have seen different pillars like uh, inheritance right inheritance we have seen we have seen abstraction we have seen encapsulation right so all of this we have seen now this is the very or the most important question that you uh, you can say 70% of chances are there if you are going to get a question from oops this question is going to arise why you should use oops okay what are the advantages of oops or what are the features of oops for all of such questions this is going to be your answer okay let's see first uh, first of the feature or first of the advantage is that it is modular and reusable okay we have to use oops because of its modularity and reusability oops promotes modularity through classes and objects allowing for code reusability next is your data encapsulation oops encapsulates data with within objects enhancing data security and integrity inheritance oops supports inheritance reducing redundancy by using existing code next is your polymorphism oops allows polymorphism enabling flexible and dynamic code through method overriding next is your abstraction oops enables abstraction hiding complex details and exposing only the essential features so hope you have understood it basically in this question you can answer the same features only which we have studied so far so this will complete it okay now i have one question for you we have seen a lot of things about oops we have understand all the features now i have one question for you based on what we have studied so far you have to write down the answer of, in, of this in the comment box what is the question which of the following best describes the encapsulation in oops 
we have different options first option is hiding data and only allowing controlled access through methods option b is allowing multiple functions with the same name but different parameters option c is inheriting properties from another class and option d is writing code without using classes make sure to comment down the answer of this question in the comment box so that's all for today guys i hope you found the video helpful if you have any doubts please let me know in the comment section make sure to join me on telegram and instagram as well you can ask your queries in the instagram dm as well and if you need any content you can request it on your on our telegram channel make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet to receive all the latest regular updates i regularly post off campus drives and preparation related videos for placements on my channel so that's all for today's video thanks for watching the video